Have you ever gone to a location where it's just been absolutely stunning, maybe inside or maybe outside, and you grab your camera, you take a picture, and you get home and you open it up, and the magic's not there, the colors are not there, everything that you saw, it just doesn't look the same on the camera. The reason for that is the limitations on the sensor of the camera. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to overcome those limitations and make amazing looking photographs that you always dreamed of inside your camera and Photoshop. Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, the very best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to get more out of your camera. Even though we're going to be talking about that, the emphasis of this is actually going to be working inside of Photoshop. But depending on what kind of camera you have, let's just pop this up right here. A bunch of different cameras. It could be, you know, a DSLR camera or a Micro Four Thirds camera such as these or, or even a point and shoot. All of these are capable of taking much better photographs than what you're currently getting out of that camera. And the reason for that is dynamic range. So let me just put this back down. I just wanted to show off my cool table. So HDR stands for high dynamic range. So the dynamic range is the amount of light that the camera can see and capture on the sensor at once. So that means detail in the shadows and detail in the highlights at the same time. So if you get beautifully detailed shadows and midtones, but the highlights are just blown out to white, that's where some of that magic is, some of those reflections, some of that color in those sunsets, looking outside when you're indoors, seeing the uh, scenery out through the window. Or on the other hand, if you can get it nice in the highlights, and then the shadows are all blocked up and you're losing a lot of detail. So in this tutorial, we're going to talk about bringing back that detail and I'm going to make it really simple for you. I'm going to use these series of photos that I shot in Cape May, New Jersey. This is a southern mansion. And here's a typical photograph that you're going to capture. This is a properly balanced exposure, which is showing, you know, as much detail as it can on the inside and the outside. Notice things like these lights, the details kind of getting lost, and also what's outside. Those are lace curtains you can't really tell. But this is the typical photograph you're gonna get, but your eye is gonna see much more detail. So essentially what we wanna do is we're gonna take three photographs. We're gonna take our regular photograph, then we're gonna take a darker photograph, which is gonna enable us to see the detail now in those lights, those lamps there, and also outside. Notice this color there that we didn't see before. And also we're going to take another photograph, which is going to be a brighter photo. And that's going to open up all the detail in these areas so we can see what's going on. See that nice pattern and those beautiful legs there in that piano, which some of that gets lost in the regular photograph. So essentially HDR is three steps. One, capture the photographs. In this case, we're going to do three. Now I have other training which goes much more in depth into HDR, by the way, and, and check it out in the links underneath. And this one, we're going to make it very simple. We're going to capture three photographs. Regular, and then we're going to make one two f-stops brighter, and we're going to make one two f-stops darker. And that's going to enable us to get the photos. Then we're going to merge them together inside of Photoshop and make them look nice. So when you take the photographs, as I've shown you, it could be a point and shoot, could be a DSLR, whatever camera it is that you have, there's a couple of settings you want to do. One of them is you want to either go into aperture priority or into manual. And the reason for that is we don't want to change the aperture. We only want to change the shutter speed or the ISO. And then once we've gone in there, we're going to do what's known as exposure compensation. So we're going to take a regular photograph then we're going to use the exposure compensation to brighten it by two stops. We're going to only change the shutter speed. Then we're going to take that photograph. Then we're going to drop it down. Well, it's going to be four from there, but two stops darker than the regular exposure. And then we're going to take a third photograph. And that's it. Now, most cameras are equipped with a auto exposure bracket setting. And if you have that setting on your camera, then you can just hold down the shutter and it will take three photographs at once. Cameras like this, you know, even the mic little earlier Micro Four Thirds, these will work. But even little point and shoot cameras, you can do this. 
all you got to do is just manually change the exposure without moving the camera. Use a tripod is great. Handheld is fine. Photoshop does a pretty good job of it. But if you do have a tripod, it's going to make life easier. Once you've taken the three photographs, what we're going to do is we're going to select them. So I've selected the three photographs. Notice right now I'm working in Bridge. You could also be working in Lightroom. And just to let you know, this process is identical in Lightroom. We're actually going to use Camera Raw that comes with Photoshop and has come with Photoshop for quite a long time. And since CC, we've been able to merge our HDRs in there. If you're following along in Lightroom, the steps are identical, the options are identical. And just to help you out, I've, in the links underneath, I've got another tutorial where I show you how to create HDR with Lightroom. But watch this one first, because there's a lot of cool things for you to learn in here. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to just right click on here and we're gonna open in Camera Raw. The Camera Raw filter is now gonna open and notice we've got a film strip here and we've got all three photographs right there inside of that film strip so we can select the photos differently. Now just to let you know, on Windows and Mac, it works exactly the same. And I'm curious, which one are you using? Are you a Mac user or are you a Windows user or maybe you're both like me? Um, drop a comment and let me know. I'm kind of curious and uh, my guess is going to be we're going to be about 50-50 split, but let's check the comments and find out. All right, so what we're going to do now is I want to select all of these. There's three ways to do it. I can hold the shift key and click. Now I've selected them. I can press control command A or I can select up here and choose select all. Either way, we've got all three of these photographs selected. We're not making adjustments to them just yet. What we want to do is merge them together. This is going to be step two. So we're going to take all the detail from those three photos and put them into one. So we go up the top here. We just click that little thing there. I don't know what that's called, the thing with the little lines on it. And we're going to choose Merge to HDR. So we're going to click here. And in the past, I've done other tutorials um, where I do this inside of Photoshop using the Merge to HDR Pro. And that's still a valid way of working. However, if you want to get very natural and realistic looking HDRs, this is a great way to do it inside of Camera Raw or inside of Lightroom. Okay, so let's have a look and see what we've got here. Definitely want to have a line images turned on. Apply auto tone. You can turn that on or off. All it does is it gives you an initial kind of place to get started. A lot of the time I like to turn it on. It just kind of helps me. And then we're just going to simply click merge. Now when we go to merge it, it's going to create a new file. This is going to be a DNG file. And we can choose where to save it. I'm going to save it right next to my other images. And I'm going to call it Southern Mansion. And by the way, thanks to Mars um, for getting us access to this place. I was teaching a workshop out there last year. That's Mid-Atlantic Mid Regional School. And I'm just going to click on save. All right, and now notice there's a new file created underneath. There's our original three images. Those are not selected anymore because now we're just working with the merged one. And if you look at the merged one, look at this already. Okay, if we look here, look at the detail that's already in here. Look at the separation between these lamps and the windows. Look at the color that's now apparently obvious. We can see the textures. We can see all the details. In the past, real estate photographers and architectural photographers had to put gels over the windows to darken the windows a little bit to balance the light or just blow the inside out for a lot of lighting. But if we do that, we lose this natural lighting. We've got this beautiful natural lighting here and nice reflections, which are natural coming from those windows. And these lamps are just adding a little bit. So it's a much more natural looking light. Even notice in the mirror, we can see the details. Okay, so we can make these adjustments. Here's the thing about working in HDR. If we look at a normal photograph, let's select this one. There's a lot of dynamic range in a raw file. If we turn the exposure all the way down, look at that. There's a lot of detail there. Not quite getting the colors and everything outside, but it's pretty good. And we can go up here. You can see we can get a lot of detail. However, if we go to our merged HDR file and we play around with the exposure, look at this. Look at the detail that is in there inside of the highlights all the way up to the shadows. So you can see it's much cleaner and it's it's much better to work with. Okay, so let me just reset my contrast and we're just going to go up the highlight. If we pull the highlight all the way up, we can make these lace curtains match really nicely. I feel like I do want to just kind of 
push up our exposure a little bit. That feels a little bit more pleasant. And you can feel free to be pretty aggressive with the highlights. The shadows you don't want to be quite so aggressive with because it can start to look fake. So I'm going to pull it back to about there. Let's pull up our whites just to get rid of the muddiness a little bit. Or you can turn them down if you want to bring out more detail. And a black will give it a little body. And if you feel the colors are a little strong, I'm going to drop that vibrance back. Because I, I don't want to push the colors too much in this situation. I want to keep it kind of natural. And then all we do now is we just click to open the image. And there we go, there's our final photograph opened inside of Photoshop. So this process, as I mentioned before, works identical inside of Lightroom and Camera Raw. It looks great on, you know, as you can see, interior shots, and it also looks amazing with landscapes. I use it a lot for my outdoor photographs capturing sunsets, and I use it extensively in my drone photos. So here's a question for you. Have you ever used HDR before? Is this new to you, or is it something you've done for quite a while? Let me know in the comments underneath. Now, once you've done these photographs and you've got these beautiful looking results, you can earn some extra revenue from these by selling them on Adobe Stock. There's a link underneath where you can become a contributor, get your photo in front of millions of people, and also, I've got another link there for you to grab 10 free images from Adobe Stock so you can get started in it. Now, by the way, if you enjoyed here working in HDR, this was just scraping the surface. I have a much more in-depth training on HDR and panoramas, and it's called Multishot Mayhem. So check that out in the links underneath and also on the card. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, smash that like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.